Hello, my beautiful people. Okay, t today I should be jumping up and down and celebrating because it's the first time that I can wear a t-shirt. I can't even believe it. It is March 17th. I did not intend on, because uh, I don't celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I just happened to put this shirt on and it's like the second time that I've worn it ever. And for those of you who can't see, it says oi on it, which is a form of music. I've only, I only really like actually a few bands. And uh, during my period of interest in skinhead uh, sorts of things, all things uh, anti-racist skinhead as a teen, you can go listen to that show. I think it's under what shattered my reality. That was weird. My video just went out. Okay, so today, <clears throat> so, so many things. Oh, so back to saying, yes, I can wear a t-shirt. I just wear, it's just always so cold here. So that's why this is a celebration because I I can actually, you know, feel like I, I'm not cold and I'm wearing a t-shirt. That was the point. Okay, so the Feeling Stuck show, this has been actually been going on for three weeks now and I haven't or longer thinking about recording this. And I keep getting inspired because when I was thinking about designing that show, I wanted to design it in a way that you could apply to any situation in life that you're feeling stuck, right? Because it is mindset related. But what it ended up doing is like, because the examples that I want to give you are from the story dealing with my dad and my stepdad, my mom's remarried husband dealing with a narcissist or somebody who has narcissistic qualities. It really just made me feel like I got to talk about this. And while I know I'm supposed to talk about it, I, I don't even know to say it's my specialty. I just know that it's really one huge part of it is about bringing awareness to personality disorders. And, you know, my dad's, both of them probably just thought my mom was crazy and wouldn't have associated it with this because people just don't have a lot of awareness about it and in terms of abuse. So, um, I don't know, there's definitions out there of what's considered abuse, but I have decided, I've decided different, many different things about the repetitiveness and what the person's doing. But, um, I don't know if I really want to decide and say that my mom was abusive. Definitely like emotional, right? I had my own emotional problem, but I I haven't decided there because there's so many different ways I feel like to define it. I mean, causing harm, if you want to look at that from that perspective. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. So the inspiration for this episode, um, I was like, okay, well, these two examples that I'm going to give, well, I need to talk about it a little bit more. And getting into these topics, I also want to say um, that please know that I'm coming from loving intention when I'm talking about these sorts of things. And like I said, no judgment. So I'm not here for that. I'm here to share my experiences with you. And, um, you know, uh, all of my things, so going back to being inspired, everything on my journey has uh, been in, it's all related to personal empowerment. Let's just put it in those words. And whether I have related with teens, which I always have my whole life, and the body image issues and all those things going on there, and just in my own way, you know, personal development kind of on my own was like a way to survive life. Right. So they're all dealing with how to empower yourself and strengthen yourself and feel confident in whatever situation you're in to do life. And that's what feeling stuck is about, is that how do you get I'm going to say how you get your mind right, how you get your mind correct. And what I mean by saying that, because everybody has a different idea of that, is knowing that with confidence, you can handle any situation. And with that being said, be happy, uh, even considering, but in those moments, you can be happy. So maybe it's happier for these people to divorce these people that they're in relationships with, whatever, right? But the point is, the person has their own personal journey, 
right? And so that's what I'm trying to help with when I was deciding about designing this episode. I'm like, I can't just write down a bunch of steps and okay, go do this and you're all good. We got to get to the root of basically working on you and you deciding, okay, do I want to stay in this situation? Do I not? Is this good for me? Um, what am I going to do in this situation while I'm here? And I gave the example in my preview episode about I stayed at a workplace for six years and I had a goal, right? There was a goal in mind. And plus I was treated, you know, well until, so are you waiting for something bad to happen to you, you know, to make these changes? So what I wanted to say in this episode, which again, I started to get a sidetracked in is that, okay, personal empowerment story dealing with teens, uh, physical acceptance issues, or physical image acceptance issues dealing within the world. Um, that's like the beginnings of it, right? My story, not feeling white enough, being hypnotized by beauty, comparing myself to the two acquaintance friends that I had. And then I looked at this and I was like, okay, my path, this is how I come to talk about how do our soul connections play a part in our life lessons. I already know my lessons, okay, and it is in terms of personal empowerment from introvert going to becoming more extrovert and all that sort of stuff. And then I've observed, so friends, coworkers, and family members and in-laws is that this, I think, is typical that you're going to meet all kinds of people from different backgrounds experiencing different stories. And I don't know what the statistics are, but I just know what has been around me and these people, whether they came in and out or they stayed and still continue, there was still a reoccurring theme in all of them. If they say, I was going to make a reference to rape three out of four, but I don't even know what the statistics are now. As far as somebody emotionally or physically being abused, um, I have met several people around me my whole my whole life. Well, no, since in a mm, early twenties, early twenties, whether it was a coworker or a friend or family member, like I said, or in-law that either they have suffered. I don't, I don't even know if I want to use the word suffered. They have experienced some sort of abuse. And I'm talking about something I think that is like, you know, the average person, the, these weren't people like, you know, um, that you might want to put and label in a certain, uh, class of people or whatever it is, right? This is your average person and they just don't share these things with you till maybe afterwards, right? And so they were people that either, and I'm not joking you with these stories because it's just wild when you're just talking to somebody and she's like, yeah, my boyfriend was drunk last night and tried to choke me and talks about really casually and, um, you know, it wasn't the first time and whether they were drunk or not, or yeah, I was in a relationship, you know, when somebody physically abused me. Um, what are some other stories? Just other other sorts of things, basically risking their life. And um, it isn't something necessarily people want to talk about because it could be embarrassing, right? Or you're just not conscious of it and it's normal. So I wanted to share those things with you is that I have gone that long I have gone through that as part of my path is observing these different situations. And when I first started taking Krav Maga, you would have thought like in a past life that I experienced something really traumatic physically or whatever abusive because of the way that I was would respond within training and things I can't explain. So sometimes I am like, I wonder if something happened to me in a past life because I am acting like this. And what I've learned in the different things along my journey, which this isn't the video I wasn't going to share just different things with you. And I have not experienced anything totally traumatic physically or anything like that, that I would tell you as other than I shared before that somebody was in my face about six to this is, um, so I'm just going to say in family, um, that got in my face and I walked away from that experiences that I am not a dumb bitch. Like, why didn't I just tell them to stop? Right. So I did not have the confidence to do that. And so 
that's how I would relate to that in that sense. And with my mom, I don't, hmm. She empowered me later on in life, but I don't know that I want to use her as an example for me in what I want to feel, what I want to talk about in being stuck. So, uh, but I definitely have a lot of empathy and compassion and, uh, you know, hearing such repetitive thinking of her threatening my stepdad with divorce, like every year for like, let's just say, you know, 10, 20, 30 years before she ended up passing just a few years ago. So um, that's that there. Okay. And so my experience with personality disorders with her, and then also my brother, same, um, we have the same parents, I think he's a blend of basically narcissist and sociopath. And so all these soul connections that I've had, these play a part and role in my life, in my messages that I'm giving to you. Okay, so yes, I have had my own journey through them, my own experience, my own perspective. Yes, but this video is not to be, it's, it's to share with you parts of my journey <clears throat> that I think are the most important and sometimes the details always aren't. But that journey that I just told you about with the six foot two person, um, that was when I was around 35, right before I found self-defense. And that had, it transformed my life. Um, and so that was a very, that soul connection was totally huge transformative thing, you know, for me. So, um, and then also learning along this journey that I never knew that mental illness could actually be developed later in life. Maybe a therapist is going to say something different or based on their experiences, but I think it's the baggage you have before. And then if something more happens to you as an adult, it almost enhances or brings out or can make it worse. Um, I don't know if you were already here, if you would say mentally sound and then immediately developed mental illness, but I could see how that could happen because what I will tell with, tell you is that this person that I did know, I would consider her, I don't know to say normal, but I, cause I can only compare her the way she was before what I knew her to be and maybe mentally sound means, okay, responsible she's responsible, she's this and this and this, but then you see over time how the person changes. And then I knew what was happening to her at home. That's how I came to this realization. Um, I also know that my mom, the way that she was in this state, right? And we, she has, she is exhibiting the traits of personality disorder. And then she became isolated for 10 plus years. And then it went to this level, which level, which was more schizophrenic. So that also could have come as a result of trauma that she was having as an adult with the passing of her grandson, my niece, my, I'm sorry, my nephew who drowned in the rice paddies. And then after a result of that, he was born with brain damage. And as a result of that, um, I'm sorry, he drowned. And then, um, he was, I think, nine. Her oldest, my mom's oldest son, um, passed due uh, due to he had several strokes and he was drinking a lot, and um, he passed. So there were different things that happened. So I think also I forgot to mention is that I don't want to say that everybody can be manipulated. Let's just say that hmm, it's kind of hard to word it. We are not immune. Like, I feel like because it can be gradual and insidious, the way somebody's talking to you or the way that they are behaving, 
you could be manipulated. Okay. Especially if you, maybe you, it's, you love or you care about that person and you see a red flag, but it's not something that happens every day. So it develops over time. So don't get mad at yourself. Okay. People, when you feel like you're going through those moments, you're like, am I crazy or is it them? Okay. I want you to know that it's again, the sense of awareness, like sometimes, especially with narcissists, they don't show their true colors for about six months. That's what a lot of people have said. So you don't really like see things. Okay. So I almost want to say any of us can become, can get into these situations. And, um, that's why we should not judge. Okay, so lastly, I want to end this episode by talking, by ending it with saying, these soul connections helped bring me these messages to share with you, right? To bring education, to bring maybe some solutions that will help you and that are going to take some effort. You know, I get it. So I am going to be designing that is coming up should be in the next couple of days or for sure by the end of this week. And I'm trying to make it really brief on the, the baby steps that are needed when, when you are feeling stuck, how do you get your mind out of this situation? How do you change your reality? How do you believe anything that I am saying right now? Well, I'm going to share with you. Okay. So it is from my experience. Okay. That I've learned in my soul connections in my life's journey thus far, the, imper the importance of personal empowerment, right? And its role in my life journey and what it's done for me. Two, how many of us can are not immune. We can fall into a trap of manipulation. Okay, people? Manipulation in not a good way. So don't be hard on yourself. Okay. If you are seeing yourself in this situation, you are supposed to be learning these lessons for a reason. You know, the reason could be to just empower yourself and ask yourself what kind of life you want to live. You want this for yourself. Okay. And third, that we can manage, endure, survive, and recover. I hope that doesn't sound cliche, but basically that is what the bottom line is, that everybody's on their own journey. I will tell you that a lot of it has to do with personal empowerment, and that's within your own lessons, or like I would say, discussed or things activism in society, where you're like, are you going to do something or not? Like, I just feel like, how do I sit here and enjoy any sort of beautiful life if there is human sex trafficking going on, if there is, um, you know, the Satanists and the raping of children and just different things and all the multifaceted layers of things, just because I don't engage with it every day or meet my neighbor who is possibly doing that. Um, I think that's what makes it sound fantastical because we hear all these stories, but it's not really something, you know, you are experiencing. Like, is there a Satanist who's performing witch rituals down the street or, you know, at my daughter's old school or, you know, like this just wild, <clears throat> even though you can look on the Megan's law or whatever and see what neighbors are around you, <clears throat> you know, having all these records and things like that, but you, you don't even know. So the point of the, st the point of that story is that, what was I saying? The last point points of this managing and during surviving, just, are you going to do anything about your life? I feel like every situation that comes in people, what are you going to do? And these soul connections that we have are going to help us learn these these lessons, they're going to help. They're going to try, right? You're going to keep repeating the patterns. And some people don't ever learn, right? So if you pay attention, your soul collections, you have very specific lessons to learn. If you are interested in learning them, you will be provided with people and situations that are going to help you. And I can make a long list of different things I've asked for, including, I will end. I said I was going to close. Now I'm going to end. You know, this is what I do. 
I remember this is a few years ago. It's every time I ask for something that I wanted to get over my little anxiety thing with basically um, it's the part of when something happens, right? Something happens that makes my heart, like I start getting heart palpitations. I start getting nervous and I don't know what to do. I, 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 it's like, I can't, I don't want to say practice my breath, but like, that's not my go-to when it should be because I should be practicing every day, but I don't, right? Um, that basically I had asked for an issue with that and this lady mom was, I got out of the car and she left her two kids in the car. They were in baby seats, seats so what is it, under three? Maybe it depends on their weight. I mean, they were definitely under three, maybe even two. And it was, it wasn't a very short, it wasn't a very far distance, but basically I got out of the car. They were here. I noticed them. The windows were down. Everything was fine. What I saw, but she just wasn't in there. So I walked into my boba tea shop and she was standing there. And all that I said was, I don't even know that I thought about it. I didn't even know if it was like, is this the right way to say it? I don't, uh, is this the best way? I didn't even think anything about it. I just said, um, you know, sometimes people call the cops on situations like that. Like, you might want to check your kid. And the kids, and she was with an older kid, so the actual older kid could have stayed with the younger kids. So that's what everything, so with all that being said, I was really nervous to say it, and I said it, but she appreciated it. And she said, thank you. And, um, <laughs> She actually just ended up going and sitting by the door so that at least that she could see them. So she did something, but, um, that was her, you know, solution or what made her feel better. So again, that story could go on and on and on, but I'm, I'm proud of myself that I pushed through the anxiety because you never know how the other person's going to react and maybe I could have said it in a better way, but I was totally caught off guard, which I shouldn't because normally when I ask for a lesson, it comes like pretty quickly, if not like within like hours, like it's that same day. So that's how that stuff happens to me. But I wanted to share that with you is that if you ask for help in these areas, you will get help because it's all about your intention. And if you want to grow yourself and if you want to overcome things, you know, I don't like not being in control of my body, which is why when I was younger, trying any sorts of drugs outside of alcohol, not even that I did that very much, I didn't like that. And so when my heart is beating fast and my breathing is interrupted and I'm acting all sort of erratic ways, like I feel out of control of my body. I don't like that. And so that's how I guess I end up challenging myself. It's like I, not to say end up challenging myself, but a challenge presents and I'm like, I want to get over that. I want to either get over it. I want to learn how to manage it. And that's where I'm at too, like with my boxing, like I want to get better. Like I want to get better at my current skills. Like if I'm not growing, something's wrong. I never knew I would need this much challenge in life. Okay. So I went like way over like six minutes over when I said I was going to close, but I'm sure all of you are used to this now. If you have listened to me enough. So feeling stuck episode I am going to work really hard at making it simplified. And I already talked about reading my self-confidence formula and getting your mind right, right? That means, do you truly want to become unstuck? And what does Nora mean? What is, what is this all about? I'm going to share with you and I am going to share with you the steps and the tools and the different thing, but the one walk away that you can do right now is you got to raise your vibration. You have to, you got to do that people, whether it's through music. So people respond in different ways. So for me is Brazilian music and um, that's for my lightning and positive light uplifting and all that. And then empowering and strengthening, which is a different, is a different idea. Um, my punk rock and hardcore music, while it's not, 
it's I guess to say it's more strengthening than uplifting. The uplifting stuff is more of like the Operation Ivy stuff. But um, smells, getting really like sensory, right? So anything you can do, color, um, I'm going to talk about that. So right now working on raising your vibration with music, with laughing, with color, with smell. It's the best way to describe it. Okay, so those are the baby steps. I almost feel like I want to like do this and then not post the actual video for like a month to give you guys time to just sit on this because I am for real in saying you can listen to all this stuff. You can listen to other people. That sounds really good. But the, and then you, you put it off or you start it right away and then like you drop off, you know, and stop, you know. And so I want you to sit with, I want you to sit with this video and truly like, do you want to become unstuck? Like, are you curious at all what I'm going to recommend? And then start doing these different things, okay? Using the different tips and the whatever, whatever. And then I'm also going to talk about my pledge to you. So as a coach, to honor, respect your path. And I'm here. I got you. I just got to I can't say it enough. I got you. You got this. It could take a very long time. I understand. And you just keep going. That's all I can say is just keep going and you will see the results. You will see the fruits of your labor. <laughs> it could take, like I said, a really long time fruits of your labor oh my god it is this is this is called putting in the work people and uh if you're used to acting impulsively and quick fixes i, I would actually say quick fix if you are used to the quick fix method and some plastic surgery to fix it all and medication this is not a. this is not that but uh you'll, you're gonna respect it in a different way Okay, so good luck to me that I don't have to record this twice. And I hope you enjoyed my beautiful backyard, <clears throat> which is about an acre. And we are looking for three acres or more. I'm so excited about actually kind of in a way like really going away from people, which I didn't think I would enjoy till I'm in my 60s. But um, I think it's really going to help me in my mental health on a lot of different levels as long as I can still do my things and drive to things. And then you drive back home away from the chaosness, chaos, chaoticness. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, people. Bye-bye.